Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. What happens if your power supply can't quite keep up with your components? Let's find out. Let's face it, picking out the power supply for your PC is probably the most boring part of the entire setup. You're scrolling through PC part pickers, picking out your CPU, motherboard, RAM, and your graphics card, and your pretty case with all those RGB lights. And then you get to the power supply. There's no room in the budget left, and you have to somehow squeeze it in there. Now it's really tempting to go with a cheap power supply, and I can definitely relate on that level. Still, it's pretty common knowledge that getting an appropriate power supply for your PC is extremely important. Not only does it have to have a high enough power output, but having good clean power going to your components will help them perform at their best and even can give you better overclocks. So what happens if you accidentally picked a power supply that is too weak for your components or you're upgrading your PC and the new parts are going to draw too much power from your existing power supply? Well today we're going to find out. I have this 250 watt Dell OEM power supply that I pulled from a very old pre-built. Now Dell does have a pretty good reputation with their power supplies, however this one's only rated for 250 watts and we are going to greatly exceed that today. The CPU we're going to be running is an FX8320. Now the motherboard's going to struggle a little bit on its own just to supply power for that CPU, but it's still going to be a good test for us as far as our processor goes. We're going to be running with 16 gigabytes of RAM and our graphics card is none other than the R9 390. This thing is going to pull a lot of power and we actually have to use quite a few adapters just to get it hooked up. The first adapter we're going to have to use is a SATA power to Molex connector. Then from there we're going to use all of our Molex connectors to power up two PCI Express 6 pin connectors. Finally, we have to adapt one of those 6 pin connectors to an 8 pin for our graphics card. To say this is a janky setup is quite the understatement, but that's kind of what we're going for here. What happens if you're pushing your power supply well past the limit? Now we're going to be having it run through our power meter so we can see how much power we're going to be drawing, and we're going to be running Furmark for our graphics card and Prime95 for our CPU so we can put a full system load on this power supply. By the way, I ran this setup through Vision Tech's power supply calculator, and it recommended a 499 watt power supply, and we are at like half of that. So this should really push us to our limits. We are in Windows. Let's try starting Furmark first. We could also try Heaven Benchmark if that doesn't work. So let's just try GPU stress test. And our system just powered down. Like as soon as we hit the button to start the stress test, the system powered down. So our GPU is clearly drawing too much power, but let's, let's give it one more shot. Let's not give up quite yet. The power button's not working. All right, let's unplug the power supply and try again. Okay, we're powering back on. Okay, Windows is trying to do its startup repair. We're gonna try one more time getting into Furmark. That was all we needed to overpower this power supply though. Now just restart my PC. Don't try to fix anything. Pretty sure I know what the problem is. And it just power cycled again. Just trying to get into Windows. Um, it just powered back off. Clearly our power supply is tired and does not want to boot this system, but I know what some of you are going to say. You're going to say that the motherboard just isn't able to support that CPU, and that's the problem and not the power supply. I mean, hopefully you all understand that 250 watts isn't going to power this system anyway, but just to prove that this is the problem, I'm going to hook up a different power supply, a 700 watt power supply, to this system and see if it boots and runs Furmark and Prime95 at the same time.
Okay, this time I'm recording the power draw meter so you guys can see how much power it's drawing. So let's go ahead and hit fur mark. Go. All right. Oh, our uh, capture card is not liking fur mark at all, which makes sense. So, <laughs> um, anyway. You can see that we are pulling over 500 watts from the wall just with Furmark running. And if we hit Prime 95, we are hitting over 600 watts. And again, the capture card is just bugging out with this. But um, we are hitting over 600 watts from the wall with Furmark and Prime 95 running at the same time. And this just goes to show that Sometimes you can't exceed your power supply limit, but you're much better off just going with a power supply that exceeds your needs. I'm gonna go ahead and quick shut this off. I don't wanna destroy my power supply. I just wanted to show you guys how much power this system draws. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, obviously our 250 watt power supply was not able to keep up with our system. And even with the 600 watt power supply, we were exceeding its rated power draw. So what happened when we exceeded our power supply's rated output? Well, with the 250 watt power supply, it just stopped working. We could boot up the system, but it wouldn't get into Windows before it crashed after attempting a Furmark run. The 600 watt power supply was able to run the system with Furmark and Prime 95 running and exceeding its rated power output limit, but over time that could damage the power supply and lead to a premature failure. Now I know the scenario we ran is unrealistic and you're not going to be utilizing your whole CPU and GPU 99.9% .9 of the time in the real world. However, it's still good to make sure you have headroom for both of those to be at full load in those rare instances that you do. Another thing to note is we actually exceeded the power draw that the Outer Vision power supply calculator told us we would need, which just goes to show you how those power supply calculators can't take everything into account. The bottom line is if you plan on running your CPU and GPU anywhere near full load at the same time, you're going to need plenty of power to run them. And I highly recommend going at least 100 watts over what any power supply calculator would tell you you need. I know it's not fun to drop a whole lot of money on a beefy power supply, but at the end of the day, it could save you from premature failure on your power supply, and it could make sure you have plenty of power for when you need it the most. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms, and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some of our new tech tested merch. And, uh, 250 watts just ain't enough for an R9 390. Keep that in mind.